Welcome to the Non-Residential Indoor Lighting Alterations Compliance Process video, where you'll learn about requirements in California's Building Energy Efficiency Standards, also known as the Energy Code. We'll discuss the Lighting Alterations Compliance Process, including the forms required to document compliance with the Energy Code, the three compliance pathways for lighting alterations, and the associated acceptance testing requirements. First, let's go over the compliance process and the forms that are required. Certificate of Compliance forms are submitted to the Building Department during the project's permit phase. These forms enable plan checkers to verify that the proposed lighting system alteration complies with the Energy Code. Certificate of installation forms are completed by the installer or contractor after the lighting installation is complete. They confirm that the installed lighting system matches the plan design and that it meets the energy code requirements for the project. Certificate of acceptance forms are completed by the acceptance test technician after the lighting system is installed and prior to the final inspection. The building inspector uses these forms to ensure that all acceptance tests have been passed and that the lighting system operates as intended by the Energy Code. All forms are available for download as PDFs on www.energycodeace.com. Note, downloadable certificates of acceptance are for informational purposes only. Actual Certificate of Acceptance forms may only be accessed and submitted by a Certified Lighting Controls Acceptance Test Technician. The submitted forms must have the logo of an Approved Acceptance Test Technician Certification Provider, or ATTCP. Additionally, you can access Energy Code ACE's Virtual Compliance Assistant Tool at www.energycodeace.com forward slash 2019 forms Dash ACE dash tool, which is available to help you fill out the certificates of compliance. Now let's talk about the three compliance pathways for alterations to 10% or more of the luminaires in an enclosed space. These pathways are established in section 141.0B2I and table 141.0F of the Energy Code. Option 1. Alteration projects adhere to the same requirements as new construction projects, including all mandatory and prescriptive lighting requirements. Option 2. For alteration projects resulting in adjusted lighting power that is 80% or less of that allowed for new construction projects, reduced control requirements apply. Projects only need to adhere to the manual area control and automatic shutoff control requirements. Option 3. For projects in buildings or tenant spaces that are 5,000 square feet or less, one-for-one -one luminaire alterations that reduce the power by at least 40% per luminaire are considered compliant if they also include all required manual area controls and automatic shutoff controls. Some projects are exempt from the lighting alteration requirements. These are projects that could disturb asbestos during construction, any enclosed space with only one luminaire, modifications to portable luminaires or those attached to movable partitions, any alteration that only adds lighting controls or replaces lamps, ballasts, or drivers, and one-for-one -one luminaire alterations of up to 50 luminaires per year per complete building floor or tenant space. In addition, healthcare facilities using option two or option three are exempt from the shutoff control requirements. Now that we're familiar with the compliance process and the lighting alteration requirements, let's walk through a sample project using each compliance pathway, starting with option one. A 1,944-square-foot office space with 60 luminaires is updating their lighting system, 
and plans to install a full suite of lighting controls to meet their green building goals. This means they can use the entire lighting power allowance given to new construction projects. For simplicity, the design team decides to use the complete building method to calculate the lighting power allowance. This calculation requires multiplying the square footage of the building by the allowed lighting power factor for that building type found in Table 140.6-B. Other lighting power allowance calculation methods include the Area Category Method and the Tailored Method. More instruction on these methods is provided in Section 140.6-C and the Non-Residential Lighting and Electrical Power Distribution Guide, available at cltc.ucdavis.edu forward slash Title 24. The Lighting Power Allowance Calculations, Lighting Schedule, and Specified Lighting Controls are documented in the Certificate of Compliance Form NRCC-LTI-E. This completed form and the permit application are submitted to the enforcement authority, like the city or county building department responsible for the project. Once the permit is approved, the lighting system is installed and the Certificate of Installation NRCI-LTI-01-E is filled out by the contractor and submitted to the building department. Before receiving a Certificate of Occupancy, certain lighting controls must undergo acceptance testing. Let's discuss when acceptance testing is required for lighting alteration projects. The Indoor Lighting Controls Acceptance Testing requirement is triggered when certain lighting controls are installed. This includes automatic daylighting controls, automatic shutoff controls, demand responsive controls, and institutional tuning controls. These indoor lighting controls must comply with the acceptance testing requirements in Section 130.4. When a project adds lighting controls to manage 20 or fewer luminaires, it is exempt from the acceptance testing requirements. Results from the acceptance tests are documented in the Certificate of Acceptance forms and used by the building inspector during the final inspection. Now let's walk through the same office building example again, but using option two. The compliance process remains the same, but the information documented in the forms changes. In this scenario, the office building owner finds out their lighting upgrade project budget has been reduced and now, to save on project costs, can only install the minimum required lighting controls and replace the existing 60 luminaires one for one. The design team selects a luminaire that only uses 50% of the lighting power allowance previously calculated. Since option two only requires that the alteration project use 80% or less of the indoor lighting power allowed for new construction projects, this means that only manual area controls and automatic shutoff controls are required to comply with the energy code. Again, form NRCC-LTI-E is used to document the lighting power allowance calculations, lighting schedule, and specified lighting controls. Certificate of Installation Form NRCI-LTI-01-E and Certificate of Acceptance Form NRCA-LTI-02 for automatic shutoff controls are also required for this project to document installed system details and acceptance testing results. Now let's look at the same lighting alteration scenario using option three to comply with the energy code. To use option three, one more calculation is required to determine if the new luminaire wattage is at least 40% less than the original lighting fixture. The design team compares the new luminaire to the original light fixture and determines it meets the requirement. Additionally, we already know that the office space undergoing retrofit is less than 5,000 square feet and alters more than 50 luminaires. 
This means that the design team could choose to use option 3, which requires that only manual area controls and automatic shutoff controls be installed to comply with the energy code. To demonstrate compliance, these details must be documented in Section Q in NRCC-LTI-E, as well as NRCI-LTI-01-E and NRCA-LTI-02. For projects that only alter the lighting wiring, alteration requirements still apply. However, these projects are not required to separate the existing general, floor, wall, display, or ornamental lighting on shared circuits or controls. If new or completely replaced lighting circuits are installed, they must meet the control separation requirements in Section 130.1A-4 and Section 130.1C-1D. Let's review what we've learned. The lighting alteration compliance process has these key steps. Design, installation, and acceptance testing. And each of these steps must be documented on the corresponding compliance forms. There are three compliance pathways for lighting alterations and acceptance testing is required for certain indoor lighting controls except when adding lighting controls to manage 20 or fewer luminaires for the entire project. That wraps up the indoor lighting alterations compliance process. For more information, visit the Energy Commission website at energy.ca.gov forward slash ORC.